Welcome to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. My name is Jeremy Wiseman, Vice President. I'm joined by Jerry Karaya, Senior Broker here at Guildhall, and wonder when it comes to all things exchange, currency, as well as the beautiful cup and handle that we like to talk about here on <laughs> The Real Money Show. What cup and handle that is with regard to the chart and looking at where gold and silver are headed, and it does look pretty good from that perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it certainly does. It looks like a launch pad from here. Now, the biggest news um, I would say that came out just today, Jerry, um, this was across uh, BNN, Bloomberg. Um, a survey shows that 55% of homeowners are strapped for extra costs. They could not afford more than a $200 increase in monthly costs. Wow. I mean, that just goes to show you how strapped things can become when you see inflation in in food and energy prices. So it is going to have a, a big effect on the economy going forward. People have to pull up their bootstraps um, and figure out how they're going to navigate these waters. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's something that just came out of left field. I mean, many, many think people... think that came out of left field? Well, not for us, Jeremy. We've been talking about inflation and currency devaluation for years, uh, decades. You know, we've been doing this since 2002. This is our 20th year in the business, and we've been talking the same four fundamentals, one of them being currency devaluation, which le- which leads to inflation. But the average the average investor, they don't really focus, they don't get the information that they need. So yeah, the, you know, inflation really came in uh, and as a as a huge headwind, pushing back people away from their their goals of obtaining, you know, stability. We talked about the seven levels of financial freedom last week. And many people have been moving back on that scale. We want to press towards number seven, abundant wealth, right? Uh, even financial independence, but because of inflation, this this uh, stealth effect on the, the 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 hit of our purchasing power, it's having a lot of people pivot and some moving back, some having to close their small businesses. A lot of entrepreneurs here in Toronto and Canada and surrounding areas in uh, in Canada um, have seen their businesses either shutter or have to make significant changes. Yeah, I think that. Um you know, we, we want to help people to protect themselves and to grow their wealth during these times. This is actually a, an opportunity right yeah. now to get involved in the market if you have the means. I, I find that a, a, oftentimes when people do come to Guildhall, it's usually they're looking for an answer, they're looking for a change. We view gold and silver as the foundation of a portfolio, and oftentimes that's something that's been missing in a lot of people's portfolio, and they they come to look for that diversification. And I do hope that over the years, as people start to understand that fiat currencies are are becoming fast worthless, worth less all the time, and gold and silver are real money, mm-hmm. hence the name of the show, the real money show, ding, ding. that people start to understand, oh, I should always have a portion of this in my portfolio. Because even if you maintained 15% percentage of your portfolio, let's say not necessarily your net worth, but your portfolio in physical gold and silver, you know, look at look at gold, gold's up nearly 400% over the last 20 years. Uh, I think silver's up to something like 350 or 325, which is still amazing given that the price of silver is only $21, $22. Um, but when I started working, it was, you know, five bucks. Mm-hmm. So it, it has had a, a great move. But when we go into the details about the usages for for silver, all of the industrial nature of that product, as well as the monetary side of it, it starts to get very, very exciting. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, again, this is about not just protecting wealth, but growing it too. I think that we have a tremendous chance here, once in a generation opportunity to, to, to really see the wealth transfer yeah. happen. There's over $300 trillion in debt right now in the world. Mm-hmm. You keep raising interest rates, you got to pay more to service those debts. This is a one-way street. And once you start, this is going to be like, a, like a, a, a game of Jenga. It's like you take out that one last block and this thing can fall apart real fast. Mm-hmm. And what can pick it up real quick, it would be going to some sort of gold standard like you saw. Not necessarily it's a gold standard, but in Russia, they backed their ruble with, with gold and, and tied it to gold. And all of a sudden, it's one of the strongest, if not strongest currency in the world. They're now having to drop interest rates. Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, this is a this is a time if you can to get involved in the market. What say you? One hundred percent. When we're seeing how quickly 
the U.S. dollar has turned from a highly liquid asset globally, and I'm talking about an international monetary asset, the U.S. Res world's reserve currency, you know, the greenback, the ultimate dollar, the almighty dollar. In an instant, how it transformed from this highly liquid asset to a useless piece of paper over, the, over a matter of a, a few days, initiate sanctions on, you know, on a fellow UN member. I mean, we're not talking about, we've seen sanctions happen, uh, sanctions happen before against uh, pariah states such as Venezuela, Iran, or Afghanistan before, but they have never been applied against a state with, with veto power in the UN security, uh, in the U UN, uh, you know, part of the UN, which is Russia. You know, you're now sanctioning a world, the bear. You're poking the bear, and immediately we saw a shift away from the U.S. dollar, and that's how quickly things can turn if you're holding a worthless piece of paper. Well, it's one of those things that it wasn't a single factor out of the blue. We've seen nails in the coffin of the um, dethroning of the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency for years um, countries starting to trade amongst each other mm -hmm. using gold. Um, Russia certainly saying, "Look, you can you can buy as much as you want right. from us, commodities wise. You just got to open up a Russian bank account, put some rubles in there, mm -hmm. buy some rubles, and and we'll accommodate you." And I think that this is a, a big part of the change. But again, this it can all be solved so quickly. You know, when we talked about just last week that. When Nixon lifted the gold standard, he could have easily just revalued gold and said, "Okay, creditors, you need you need gold. Fine, we'll we'll revalue it up so that we're not getting rid of ours." It it really would have been that simple. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have just said, "Okay, we're 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 going to get rid of the the peg, we're going to let it float, but we're still going to back our dollar." You know, gold could have gone to eight hundred and fifty in nineteen seventy two. It could Instead have, yeah. of 1978, while they, of course, they did all sorts of things to try to stop it from rising, they still try to do everything to stop it from rising. And why don't we talk about that a little bit? That really is the million-dollar question. Is it a good thing or a bad thing that ultimately there is – I mean, look, there's distortions in all markets. There's manipulations in all markets. Keeping interest rates low for 10 years was a manipulation of markets. What do you think about – the fact that gold is trading at, you know, a little under two thousand dollars an ounce, when it should be north of ten thousand, is that good? Is that bad? What are your thoughts? It's amazing. This is there is no other opportunity like this, especially looking at silver versus gold at eighty four to one. There is no better opportunity right now in in an asset class in a in a in a in an asset that represents money and industrial attributes. That is in high demand. There is no better opportunity in having prices where they are um, at the tail end of um, this this decades long chart pattern that we've uh, that we continue to dissect of the cup and handle. This is a launch pad into a a new a new era for gold that we have never seen before. We uh, received a few reports this week. One being the incrementums in gold we trust report. It's their May edition. So the May edition, it dissects all of the fundamentals. It actually concludes where they see gold uh, by the end of 2025. So you just did you just skip right to the bottom? Right to the summary, <laughs> okay. right to the tail end. And then in closing, citing things more more so with the uh, the pegging of the gold, the ruble to gold, this new in international monetary system. Uh, we're going to see gold closer to five to seven thousand within the next couple of years, um, although being fairly muted. They relatively said it was a conservative valuation that they this thing could very well be into tens of thousands, silver multiple times higher. Um, but you know, this is the opportunity. So it is an opportunity where, where we're at right now as far as prices go. This is your chance to pick up at least 14 to 1500 ounces of physical silver because in 1980, 15 to 2000 ounces can buy you a house. And many of the millennials today are looking at that dream of one day owning a house, and this is your very ticket. Look at this market, because about 50,000 Canadian dollars can buy you 
fourteen to fifteen hundred ounces of physical silver. Well, speaking of real estate, Jerry, I mean, I'll just throw out a couple of headlines here from BetterDwelling dot com, which is a great blog for real estate news. Um, here's the first one: Toronto and Vancouver real estate too expensive? Try cheaper markets like New York City. <laughs> Um, and, and I understand that, you know, um, I went to, um, I visited uh, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, uh, probably about, I want to say, maybe five years ago. And even five years ago, Jerry, we were, we were just looking, beautiful neighborhood. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's transitioning so uh, amazingly quick. And we we're just looking at some prices going, wow, these are, these are, pretty comparable to Toronto at this point. Now, that was five years ago. Mm -hmm. Imagine Before today. Before the exodus. Yep. Imagine today. Here's another one. Toronto suburban real estate is 76% over, 76 overvalued, highest in all of Canada. And wow. that's according to Bank of Montreal. Um, uh, a bubble, eh? Uh, <laughs> Scotiabank's very pessimistic outlook is, is, real estate prices, is real estate prices rise 10%. Um, that's a, I guess they're pessimistic. Canadian GDP per capita is still down. May indicate drop in living standards. Cat, Stats Canada that goes along with the first thing we discussed on the show, which is it's starting to get tight, mm -hmm. right? Now we are seeing a trend. Before we go to break, we are seeing a trend of people deciding, I'm going to get out of the market here at the, you know, if we can get out of the market at the top, we're going to go rent and put our money into not the stock market but physical gold and silver. So we'll tell you a little bit about what our, what our clients are doing in that respect and that trend that we're seeing. The number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. If you want to own some physical gold and silver and have never purchased before, you should go to guildhallpreciousmetals.com. It's our e-store. It's a great way to see the types of products that are available. All of the products that we sell at Guildhall are LBMA approved. That's London Bullion Market Association. That means these products and brands are globally recognized. Liquidity is assured. They're all sourcing ethically. They're uh, refining to the proper purity, fashioning to the proper weights, and handling global business. So if you buy a product from Guildhall, you know that you're going to have no issue selling it down the road. As opposed to buying something that you find online and it just seems to be really cheap, great. But are you going to be able to sell it when you need to sell it? That's the key. Okay. That's what we're here for, educating people about how to get involved in the market. So go to guildhallpreciousmetals.com, check out some of the, the inventory that's available and a great place to start. Pick up a tube of silver maples, maybe an ounce of two or gold. Get that physical gold and silver in your hand and start to have that aha moment of, yes, if I can't hold it, I don't own it. This is real money. It's the Real Money Show on AM640, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. Here's some uh, new headlines, Jerry. This comes from Gold Telegraph. You know, we like to just do some headlines from Gold Telegraph because they seem to really have their finger on the pulse yeah. of the gold and silver market. Um, this one comes, uh, this is about Frank Giestra. Uh, he said that on gold, this was, I guess he did a, an interview recently, said, so just seeing how much central banks are buying, I suspect that we're heading towards a bifurcation of the global monetary system. I think this is um, an observation that's something we've been monitoring and talking about for, I don't know, since 2008 when central banks became net buyers of gold. I think they understand what they're up against with regard to the fiat currencies and we've seen some incredible statements from central banks around the world as to their reasons for acquiring physical gold as a means of securing their their currencies De as yeah as a mean of defense against volatility of other currencies and i think ultimately it creates creates sovereignty you know having that physical gold is sovereignty now the problem of course is if you you're holding that gold where it can be prevented from you getting it. Now I'm talking about London, because London seems to have a bad habit of not giving countries their gold if they deem them bad, bad, mm -hmm. evil, like that's it, you know? Yeah. 
It's not um, easy. And if that was the case, then they really should have just sent the gold home a long time ago um, before they decided to just hold the gold uh, or or tell them long before then, hey, if you're going to get your gold, you better shape up and, and follow our, you know, it's it's just nuts. I guess back in those days, there was a little bit more level of trust. They trusted other nations, but I would I would have definitely recalled my gold right after the uh, the World Wars. Right after the World Wars? Immediately. Because it was that important to... Sh to ship it off in the first place, just in case if they were ever pillaged. So it's just as important to recall it in my my. Oh, I opinion. see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I, but they put it all together to, because it was gold backed, so they they could just move it from one side of the one side of the vault to the other. Mm -hmm. That's true. So you do need some sort of deposit, but it's a question of where do you keep all of the gold, mm -hmm. right? If you're a country, do you keep it all at home? Do you have to keep it all somewhere else? Um, I would say just like any other person coming to Guildhall, we, we tell them to diversify. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a little bit at home, great, some in a safety deposit box. Now you put it into a vault, maybe a couple vaults. Then you, then you expand internationally. Uh, Singapore, Cayman Island, maybe even the States if you're, if you're feeling comfortable with that. Um, but you can, you can diversify. Mm -hmm. And what's wrong with that? Holding assets in different places. That's imperative right now. But you know, some people are getting rid of assets, Jerry. Interesting. One of the, th one like of the what? trends we're seeing at Guildhall is we're seeing a, a trend of people who have decided to sell their property um, in, in Toronto, in Ontario. And uh, especially if it's a rental property, I'm hearing people saying, no, I want to get rid of my rental property because I don't want to be in a situation where it's, it's they either, they're choosing, like the renters choosing between mm -hmm. eating or paying rent. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be not paying rent. Mm -hmm. You know, I know there's lots of, there's, there's got to be a dearth of uh, um restaurants and, and businesses downtown who aren't fully paying their rent mm -hmm. and what's the landlord going to say they're just they're not what are you going to kick them out for you're right who, who are you who's going to take their place right now mm -hmm. right so um not necessarily good news in that respect you're seeing people sell that and sell their principal homes mm -hmm. they'd rather go rent yeah you know which kind of leads to a question of i mean you gotta you gotta pretty much feel this market's at a top if you're if you're willing to sell yeah exactly well the april new home sales in the u.s only came in at about a hundred and uh, five hundred and ninety-one thousand annualized behind expectations of seven hundred and fifty thousand. So, the cracks are already expanding in the U.S. market again, very much like the Fre Fannie Freddie Mac, uh, you know, the subprime mortgage issue. And here in Canada, June first, the Bank of Canada is ready for another fifty basis point rate hike. So Canadians are feeling it as well. They're looking at the rental markets, rent. If you're looking at a rental property, you're looking at about paying about three thirty five hundred potentially for an entire house, four thousand depending on the area. So massive shifts and ma massive, uh, you know, decisions having to be made because of the cost, because of cost of living, because of food and food potential food shortages. We're seeing that increasing. So, yeah, these investors are you know taking uh, taking their money out of the real estate market. And uh, you know they're coming to Guild Hall and they're they're looking at metals. Yeah, and you know when you're when you're talking about putting in several hundred thousand dollars as an example, you're giving yourself an opportunity to lower the premiums on the physical product. If you're buying one ounce gold bars, you know you're paying over a hundred dollars over spot for that physical product. But if you're getting kilo bars and even ten ounce bars, you're into the sixty dollar range. Mm -hmm. So now. At that point, if you're at a four percent cost of doing business, it becomes a it becomes a you know the analysis of it is okay. Is real estate going to go up another six percent every year, or is can gold go up another fifteen, twenty, thirty percent from here? And it starts to be not just a question of okay, well, where do I put my put my wealth where it's safe, but also where's the opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's where, you know, we would, we would encourage people to put a little bit of money into the silver as well. Um, we're not, we're not advisors, but if you're going to have some physical gold and silver, silver's got a lot more upside potential. There is more volatility. It's a smaller market, but silver could go to a hundred, 200, $300 in short order. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is in such high demand 
from not just a monetary side, but industrial side, that one way or another, mm -hmm. it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna fly. Yeah. One way or another, mm -hmm. and you know, every day you wait, you're one step closer. Yeah. And I know this week was a bit of a meh, lull you to sleep kind of week. You know, silver didn't go down. It didn't rock it up. It moved up a little off the floor. Gold was a, was a little more exciting in that it got up over 1850. So it really kind of got out of trouble in that $1,800 range. So it kind of felt a lot more comfortable so far. We're going into a long weekend in the States. So we'll see what happens on, on Monday, Tuesday with the, or Monday with the market closed in the States. Uh, quiet markets can, can sometimes be uh, not such a good thing for, for the gold and silver market. But, you know, things bounce back. And I think we're starting to see the bounce back here. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so, you know, just looking at a cost benefit analysis, you can say, okay, there is a cost to acquire gold. But if I'm buying larger, larger bars, I'm going to lower that significantly. And now it's a question of, well, you know, if gold only went up 20% this year, it that takes us to something like $2,100. You mm -hmm. know, it's a $200 gain from here. Yeah. I don't think that's a huge ask. No, no, that's exactly what uh, the, the caught reports that I was talking about a couple weeks ago, where we saw very low on both sides of the commercials and the, and the, and the, and the banks, they were all short. They were actually low, pretty low volumes on, on both along and the short side. So that shows a correction in the metals markets. Further, the, do the U.S. dollar index, as I has been, have been highlighting the last few weeks, um, has come off of its high um, at May 16th high. Last week, we're about 103. Today, we're at 101. Watch the 100 mark. So this is a complete reversal for gold and silver. As you mentioned, we're back over that uh, that 200-day moving average, 1850 mark for 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 gold, um, eyeing 1875, 1890, breaking into the 1900s. Uh, but this week we saw the FOM, FOMC was this Wednesday. They reported a print of of talking about continuing rate hikes throughout the summer. So a 50 basis point rate hike in June, July, and then now they're talking about pausing. They want to pause. Oh, and and Christine Lagarde in in Europe is talking about raising. So they've just passed the baton back and forth. So this is going to be very anti-dollar. If this is a, this is why we're seeing the dollar index dropping back into the 100 zone, because it is showing a central bank failure. And when that happens, when that reversal actually happens, I mean, pending the the stock market, if it can handle another 50 basis point hike three times until September. Um, this is going to be a massive re reversal for precious metals in 2100 gold right through that. It'll slice through it like hot butter and it's going to be insane. Yeah, we've seen that so many times in this market where a, a, a resistance seems so strong and then one day it just disappears. It's like, as if it never existed. You just go bam right through it. Silver has a little bit more of a psycholo psychological level to get through. We've got to break through 28. But I think once we break through 28, it, it kind of becomes a bit... It's going to be in my estimation, kind of unstoppable. It's hard to say where the next level would be. You know, does it just start motoring from there? Does it stop at 32, 35, 40? You know, where could it stop once it kind of breaks through these levels of $28 again? Because I think once it breaks through 28, you know, the psychologic, the psychology of $30 has already essentially been broken. Yeah. You know, you've come over the, the 28 mark where it's been uh, peaking constantly over the last couple of years. So once you break 28 again, it's like a foregone conclusion that mm -hmm. we're going 30 and higher. Yeah. So, you know, I think we know this thing is going to rock it, but we've got a little bit of an impediment in front of us, right? We've got this like $1,900, $2,000 level in gold. We've got to break these levels, um, you know, Gold getting to 3,000 is going to be probably tougher than gold going from three to five. That's right. And same thing with silver. So it's just kind of getting through these first initial, initial, uh, you know, base camps. But it's going to happen. There's no doubt in my mind it's going to happen because no one's selling. Mm -hmm. There's not a seller out there. You know, every so often we have someone come in and they sell, but we're, we're talking 98% buyers to 2% sellers mm -hmm. um, in, of any significance. So what's the end game? Mm -hmm. Just keep buying because 
at the end of the day, when this all of this paper becomes worthless and the digital stuff just starts to disappear on you, people are going to fast realize that they need some physical assets in, in their portfolio. And once that really starts to happen, what and we've, we've talked about this a little bit in the past, but what happens if a not just any hedge fund, but what if a few hedge funds get together, a pension plan gets together and decides, let's get some physical metal in our portfolio. Whoa, watch out what goes on in this market at that point. And talking about that, Jeremy, we had uh, this week the, w, the the famous WEF, so the World Economic Forum. They were all meeting and talking in Davos, and what a mess! I mean, mean they're smacking talking, their lips, yes, and just um, you know, just showing off with all of their you know their, their the wealth that they have and the food the the food that they're eating while the world has is experiencing shortages of food. They're having their deer and their fresh. Yeah, it was like Hunger Games. It was amazing. It was just absolutely gross. Yeah. And while these Western nations are meeting, we had the BRIC nations meeting. You got the Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa meeting. We'll talk about that on the other side of the break. The number one eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. It's the Real Money Show on AM six forty. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com. If you're looking to own physical precious metals in your RSP, TFSA, Lira, Lif, RIF, you can contact Guildhall. We deal with fully allocated, fully segregated physical product held in a vaulted, secured facility. We use Brinks and you retain physical ownership of your product the entire time but it's held outside the banking system. This is the whole point. Have a physical asset held in your registered account, held outside the banking system. This is something that is the most secure way to hold wealth within a registered account, in, in my estimation, because it's not digital, it's not paper. It's actually a hard asset that you own that's outside the banking system and yet still within your registered account. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, you're you're one step away of literally just having it in your living room. That's right. Of course, we have to keep it in the vault, but that's how close it is. Mm -hmm. So that's something to consider. Of course, if you've never purchased metals before, feel free to go to our website, guildhallpreciousmetals.com, pick up an ounce of gold, maybe a tube of silver maples, maybe a 10-ounce bar of silver. Get an idea of what this means to have some physical money real wealth in your hands. And then you'll start to say, ah, oh, you know what? This feels good, I wanna own more. Mm -hmm. We would call those the, the stackers, the monthly buyers. Um, you're building wealth. If you're looking to protect wealth, you know, think about RSP, TFSA, holding physical product in a, in a vault um, where, it's, where it is physically secured and insured. So with that said, we're talking about World Economic Forum. I love, I've been following the Instagram. I think it's True North. I think we both follow yeah. True North. And they've been reporting on all of the crazy things that they talk about at, at World Economic Forum. And um, they just kind of hide between this. We have a tremendous opportunity. I mean, I know I said that at the top of the show, <laughs> but it's always this tremendous opportunity amongst our crew to change the world into our vision <laughs> for your benefit <laughs> for, your, for benefit. your benefit and safety and security yeah and trudeau it looks like he's not allowed to go that's right it looks like he's been like no you can't come anymore <laughs> you're <laughs> yeah, that's right. you're a stain yeah. right now you, what, with what you did recently um and and all of a sudden pierre polyev is anti world economic forum mm -hmm. which is um that's in that's an interesting development on the campaign trail refreshing yeah but we only bring up the World Economic Forum because as a dichotomy to that, you've got the BRIC nations coming together, and they seem to have a vision that would be more pal palatable to the rest of us plebs in the world <laughs> who aren't feeding off of pheasant and, you know, um, uh, extinct Bugs. fish and uh, foie gras and, and uh, all, the, all that wonderful stuff that they're, that they're feasting off of there as if it's... Uh, this is the world that they want, but we'll eat bugs. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We'll eat bugs and not and, own a thing and not meat. Mm -hmm. That that's okay for us, but for them, the finest grain-fed whatever. <laughs> so, what, what's the what's going on with the bricks, Jerry? So more important for us, plugs, right? It, exactly. We have to keep an eye on what the brick nations are doing because, despite the World Economic Forum meeting and talking about their globalist desires, we have the brick nations—Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa—all meeting, all to discuss 
what Incrementum's In Gold We Trust report talks about, which is their worry of how the West may be overestimating its position with regard to its de facto mo monopoly of international currency reserves. So they're worried about this de-dollarization, de and they're, they're, they're pivoting, and they're pivoting away from the SWIFT system, the militarization of money, and they're talking about, you know, let's, let's, let's uh, really embrace this change of global systems, this global international monetary system. So it was, um, it was the, uh, one of the ministers, uh, his name is Sergei Glaziev. He's uh, uh, one, of, one of Russia's most influential economists and a member of the National Finance Council and former Minister of Foreign Economic Relations. He explained the role that commodities will play in the emerging multipolar monetary order, as opposed to the one world currency order. We're talking about multipolar, so many nations involved in this. That's the vision that we the people need. And what he said was, the third and the final stage on the new economic order transition will involve a creation of a new digital payment currency. A currency like this can be issued by a pool of currency reserves of BRICS countries. The basket could, uh, could contain an index of prices of main exchange traded commodities, gold, and other precious metals to back up their currencies. Key industrial metals, hydrocarbons, grains, sugar, so resources, real hard assets to back a, their currency. So no more of the fiat, digital, one world printed currency. We're gonna be backing it up with real stuff. And this is the new vision, a vision that the BRIC nations have, I think a checkmate over the WEF. They have the counter moves in place because we saw the one counter move that proved to be genius, which was the, the pegging. And as we're seeing in the news today, a lot of pegging talk, pegging of this, uh, uh, just pivoting towards uh, cryptos for a second, a lot of the stable coins, you know, went belly up, lost their one-to-one -one peg to the fiat currency. So you're pegging to the wrong thing. You're pegging to mm. fiat to fiat or crypto to fiat. You're pegging to the wrong thing. Look at the model of pegging to gold, for example, and how immediately, how immediate that brought stability. For example, you talked about that uh, you talked about rate cuts. Well, Russia's, Russia, Russia's central bank this week cut its interest rate uh, once again from 14% down to 11%, citing decreased stability risks, further citing a slowing in inflation and the recovery of the ruble, an instantaneous recovery. And that is the reason why the BRIC nations are going to be involving. And the first item was gold and precious metals involved around their currency. So this is a massive move that the world should be focusing on, away from the World Economic Forum worries. We don't need to worry about that, in, our, in my opinion. We're going to be focused in on our priorities, moving away from worrying about money and wealth. We're moving to abundant wealth and precious metals. And, we're, and start focusing on the real priorities, our families growing and passing things on to our next generations because that's the point of you know of of our families we want to pass on generational wealth and there's no other way to do it besides resources land gold physical precious metals and diamonds they're real money jeremy anti-inflationary anti-bubble anti-globalist this is unipolar or rather multipolar and this is the way we want it yeah, I think it's all about the hard assets backing things to bring trust. And what you're talking about, it's about these countries, communities, people coming together saying, this is going to be good for all of us if we all have a level playing field and we know what the value of something is, where it's backed by commodities versus backed by nothing, where the value is very is much more relative. You want you want to be able to say we're all on the an equal playing field, and that's going to attract business. That's going to attract people to this system. The number one eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. More on the other side of the break on AM six forty. Welcome back to the Real Money Show. The number one eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. Jerry, you were talking about um, relative assets and currencies with the cryptos and whatnot, and I was thinking about NFTs. And there was a, an auction recently in Hong Kong for Christie's jewels and a 3.06 carat fancy vivid blue internally flawless diamond sold for just shy of $5 million US, which is 
incredible. Now, if you gave me the option of owning a digital picture of a monkey, <laughs> okay, working out, I don't know, <laughs> for that amount of money, I'd, no, the answer is no. I'm going to take the diamond. Yeah. I'm going to take the diamond. Another diamond that sold was a fancy, intense, orangey pink VVS1 which was 13.32 carats, but it sold for $4.365 million mm -hmm. at auction. Mm -hmm. That's someone who's saying, I know where I want to put my, th my $4.3 million. I'm going to put it into that. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's incredibly rare. No one in the world has anything like it. And I can own that. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. So you can start to see even at auction, people are, are appreciating real things and they hold on to them for a very long time. I saw a Monet sold uh, for $50 million and it, it had been held in the family for 30 years, mm -hmm. 30, not, not a year, not five years and let's try to flip it. Yeah. 30 years. I mean, that's, that's a full generation, right? Uh, kid, Kid grows up, goes to school, moves out, moves back home, moves out, moves back home again, and <laughs> then uh, then off off you go. That's you know, thirty years comes and goes, and I can only imagine how much money they made on that. I know I know where diamonds have been in fifteen twenty years, so it's pretty impressive if you can hold on to something for a long time. And I don't know, maybe people are feeling, maybe there's some people who feel frustrated because they've held precious metals for a long time. I mean, gold has consistently moved up. Silver has stair-stepped higher from, you know, the $18 range into the into the 20s. We have been as high as 28. We're in the $22 range. Um, what would you say to someone who might be long-term, but perhaps frustrated by what they're seeing right now as we're, you know, being lulled to sleep in the market in the kind of sell in May, go away kind of feeling that mm -hmm. there was this week. Yeah. Well, despite um, all of the strong fundamentals for precious metals and diamonds, uh, all the fundamentals are in place. We talked about all of the various things that are happening for metals that are supporting precious metals and diamonds being negatively correlated to the US dollar in the stock market. Concentrated wealth pass it on. If you need to transition out of Canada, you have a diamond to, to take with you very easily, concentrated wealth to, to reset somewhere else. But the one, the one thing that's really holding things back would be speeches on, on a podium, an FOMC speech or a Fed speech. Um, it, it, these things kind of are, cause knee-jerk reactions to the currencies, and which is important, a very important perspective to not view the assets that you're purchasing now holding physically in dollar values. View them in the matter of ounces and what they are. They are measured wealth. They are the barometer of wealth and the barometer of economic health. And you have to re basically realize why smart, savvy investors, central banks, and countries are hoarding these real resources. They're hoarding it for one thing. It's de-dollarization because there is a major shift. And you better do it soon and early before too late. Because if you're too late, you know, if you're stuck holding a million, two million dollars worth of paper, that could just be toilet paper, Jeremy. Yeah, one of the biggest problems that we have in this market going forward is that the market has been suppressed. The good thing is that it allows people to continue to get into the market, right? If you needed the funds for something, maybe it's a bit frustrating. Although, again, you know, gold has had, out of 20 years in the market, it's had three down years. I mean, that's an incredible track record. Um, and it's up near nearly 400%. So, you know, you know, holding it is going to protect and grow the wealth. But going forward, you know, what happens because of this suppression? What happens if that gets unleashed, and all of a sudden, the market's moving up so fast, that it becomes impossible to even buy it? Mm -hmm. That's, that's my concern is that if you know, it is better to be a month early than a day late, because if you're a day late in this market, you might miss a $10 move in silver, a $15 move in silver, if you can even get into the market. And to your point earlier about understanding that the currencies are, you know, that it's about the ounces. If you understand that if the dollar was worthless, then gold is priceless. Mm -hmm. If the US dollar goes to zero or disappeared, Okay, we're not saying it's going to, but just at a, just from a theory standpoint, 
it's not backed by anything. It's just paper. It's just mm -hmm. fiat currency. So if it's worthless, if it goes to zero, it's zero. Mm -hmm. Gold becomes priceless in that currency. Mm -hmm. This is the idea of owning ounces. And what you're leading to there, Jerry, is that eventually it becomes about the value. It becomes, well, how, what can I buy with my ounces? Not what is it? What is it priced at? What is it worth? It's what can I buy with it? Mm -hmm. And this is the, the point of the, these BRIC nations looking at gold because they're looking for an anchor of trust. The trust has been, has been stomped on over and over again with every major fiat currency that has ever come into existence. It's always lost. It's always gone to zero. And we're on the cusp of an internationally uh, world economic monetary new world order. This is exactly what's happening, and it's moving with a new anchor of trust. And that, for, uh, for our purposes of this show, is talking about gold, because gold seems to be predestined for this very pers uh, purpose for several reasons. Gold is neutral. There's no counterparty risk. Gold is liquid. The amount of debt that needs to be refinanced, inflation, and de-dollarization. And with gold, you have silver. With the silver to gold ratio right at today at 84 to 1, silver is going to go up leaps and bounds. Gold can, and if we're using math, and to quell and refinance the world's debt, gold will need to mathematically go up north of 10,000, which would put silver close to 1,000 at a 20 to 1 ratio. So this is the, this is where we're happening. This is what is happening, and shift with this new pegging of the world currency to gold. It's time to get involved. I mean, if you've been waiting, if you've been thinking about it, it's time to learn about how these markets work. Give us a call. Just say, hey, listen to the show. Tell me how it works. Mm -hmm. You know, get involved. Go to the go to the website guildhallpreciousmetals.com. Pick up a couple ounces of gold, some some silver. Get your feet wet. Start to understand how this works. We're all about education here. We love talking about the markets. We'll show you how it works within registered accounts or how to physically store your product. If maybe you're going away or you're selling a property and you want to um, have the assets or have the wealth in the asset as opposed to cash in the bank kind of thing. Um, so it's all about wealth preservation at this point, but we. We do believe the opportunity is there for that wealth to grow um, incredibly over the next several years as we watch all of these currency play, currencies play out, the inflation play out, everything. There's a lot of upheaval right now, a lot of learning, a lot of um, uh, unmasking of things, a lot of truth being coming out, and it'll be interesting to see how these things play out over the next several years. Jerry, great to chat with you. That's it. That's That's the end of the show. We did awesome it. show. That was it. So, you know, go do, go do other things. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks for listening. And we can't wait to speak to you again next week here on The Real Money Show on AM640.